Hello, I'm Claire from Wild Ginger Runny. I'm here in my hometown of Coventry with the rather marvellous Anna McNuff, who Hello. is running Barefoot Britain. I am. So Anna, where are we going today? Today we're running to Solihull, um, the bright lights of Solihull, which is about 15 miles. Navigation could be a bit tricky, but we're just going to go for it and see how things play out. Fantastic. And first of all, I know you're running this barefoot, but yeah. most important question of all, what do you think of the Godiva statue behind us? I think she's beautiful. I mean, to be fair, I'm a little bit envious because I quite like to find out what it's like to ride a horse naked. But um, yeah, she's pretty spectacular. I especially enjoyed Godiva coming out of the clock as well. Fantastic. Well, we're going to catch up with Anna some more on this 15 mile run. You might be wondering why I'm dressed as an apple. I'll also be telling you more about that on the run. So without further ado, let's go to Sunnyvale. Let's go! <laughs> dressed as an apple for what reason I do not know yet. And <laughs> <laughs> um, what is a really Coventry way to count down and run out? <laughs> Can we just shout three two one naked lady? Yeah. 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 Three, two, one. Naked lady! <laughs> Oh, it's madness. Madness. I love it. How many days of madness now, though? Um, yeah. Do you know what, what would this be? So I've been going four months. I started on the 2nd of June. Um, so, yeah, yeah, probably close to that. Yeah. And I've not run all of those days. No, but, um, but it's there, isn't it? Yeah. But, um, and then about six weeks to go now. <laughs> Nice part of Coventry, Spun, Is it? Spun Street. Nice job. Yeah. Everyone does, I and mean, I like that. Oh, okay, so, okay, yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, that is just a strip of joy. <laughs> and I have to sort of bump people out of the way. I'm like, sorry, I'm on the cable strip. Highway. <laughs> Howard Road near oh, Shepherd. Right. <laughs> we'll be running past Marist. That's why I thought I can't not do it. I know, it's me too. too. Close. It's alright so far. Um, not too much poo. Well done, Coventry. <laughs> well done. <laughs> um, and how many, how much have you got left? Uh, I've that's... got over a thousand miles still to go, but I've done fourteen hundred miles, so machine. I think that's alright, I deserve a few chocolates, I'd say. <laughs> So what do you think of running in calves so far? Uh, then, so far, it's right. it actually right. been pretty pleasant. A um, little bit gritty in that bit, but I'd say overall it's pretty nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying Coventry. And also I haven't had anyone shout at me, you've got no shoes on! Yeah, which normally happens. <laughs> which you might not have realised. Yeah, I know, that's, that's it. It's like, oh no, I've forgotten them! <laughs> so, so Anna McNuff. Yes, Claire, Matt's dead. Why on earth are you doing this challenge? Oh my gosh, I ask myself that question every blimmin' day. So, because I've done a 2,000 mile running trainers before, I just thought I want to talk to young girls about taking on challenges. Every challenge I've ever taken on, I think, what am I doing? And then somehow I work it out and I get to the end and I've got this confidence I didn't have before. So I'm telling the girls they've got to do that. And I thought, Sorry. if I do that, all right? You're just kicking obstacles in my path. Lollipop in her way. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> um, I thought, if I do this running trainers, if I'm being honest with myself, if I stand there and say to these girls, you've got to push yourself. And I, I think I could do it in trainers. So this little thought just entered my head of, why don't you do it in bare feet? And I thought, that's ridiculous. Um, but it wouldn't leave me alone. And so here I am making it harder for myself by running in bare feet. That is purely the reason. And how much kind of poo and glass and stuff have you trodden on so far? Oh my gosh, so much. Um, thankfully not too much glass. I've danced around a lot of glass, but I have stood in so much poo. Poo doesn't bother me, but the worst thing I stood in was a dead rabbit. That was disgusting. 
absolutely rank. Oh my god. Yeah. I've got a few questions from my audience members. Oh! Um, and so I'll ask them to you in a little bit. Okay. Because my arm is starting to hurt now. <laughs> Good, have a break. No, no mind about your feet. No, my arm is you've hurting. had a break, go on. <laughs> yeah. We'll catch up with you in the sack. Perfect. <laughs> Anna has found a rather nice new double yellow line. Oh my gosh, it's like utopia for the feet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice tarmac. <laughs> Nine out of 10 for this tarmac. Well played. <laughs> My name's Sally Orange, hence the apple. Um, and I, of course, uh, have ran a marathon on every continent dressed as a different piece of fruit. Amazing. If I was in shorts and t-shirt, I'd just be another runner. So they asked me why, like you've just done. And I get to say because of mental health. And, and that starts the conversation. And I see we've got this hashtag here. Time, Time to, talk. to talk. Time to talk. Just breaking down the stigma of of mental health we've all got mental fitness and just like physical fitness we need to keep on top of that it just normalizes the conversation and i did actually get the guinness world record for the fastest marathon dressed as a nut and Amazing. as i've already got the guinness world record for the fastest marathon dressed as a piece of fruit wow. i really am fruity and nuts wow fruit <laughs> and nut chocolate exactly <laughs> A bit tricky here. This is nice. This is a bit more tricky, yeah, because there's lots of things that poke into your foot, especially because I've got a foot cut and it just jams up into there. But yeah, it's, it's not for too long, then it changes again. This This is like perfect barefooting. It's like a little massage for the feet. And I've got some questions from my audience for you. Far away. As we run through the steam nettle field. So Guy Greater X wants to know, what's been the highlight so far? What's been so challenging? And what are you looking forward to next? Um, I think the highlight has definitely been the uh, <laughs> Stinging out patch, watch out. Uh, the Shetland Islands has been the highlight, definitely. That was just amazing, beautiful community of people. They've got stunning scenery, they've got seals and puffins, and that was a nice place to start. Um, and then the challenge, the biggest challenge is just not knowing what you're gonna be running over every single day. And you have to just let go and be like, oh, what'll be will be. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going through my hometown of Gloucester in a, in a week's time, which is, be, will be lovely. Oh, lovely. Yeah, and then down to the Channel Islands. I'm really looking forward to a little stint down there. Mm. I think that'll be lovely. Awesome. And also everyone keeps asking me why I'm going. It's such a ridiculous long way to go, but give the Channel Islands some love. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alex Dehoto asks, how is Anna finding the motivation? Do you know what, Alex? I don't actually know if that makes sense. So I definitely don't leap out of bed every morning and think, I wanna go and run 22 miles or 23 miles in my bare feet. I actually find I just am not thinking too much about it because if I think too much, then I won't do it. <laughs> or, you know, it's just harder. And, and, it, and the fact is I'm doing it, I'm not stopping. So I just don't try not to think. As soon as I hear all those thoughts of like, why are you doing this? Oh, you're tired, <sighs> shut them off. And just get on with it. Very wise woman. Yeah. And Emma Soden says, what does Anna think about to pass the time whilst running? Do you have any particular tricks? Oh, I listen to a lot of audiobooks when I'm having a really tough day or, um, but quite often it's like driving down a motorway. You don't actually think about anything. Your brain is just sort of gone off on one. And I know when I come to, that's when I suddenly, I, don't, I, need, I need an audiobook because I'm thinking too much. So, um, I guess everything and nothing. I just let my thoughts roll around, but a lot of audiobooks, that's my top tip. 
Okay, and the final audience member question to you, Anna, is John H. Gardner says, how do long distance athletes like Anna eat and drink to keep from bonking, especially when you don't feel like eating and in the heat? Oh, um, the sun's well, come out. The heat is a tough one, but first of all, I just eat when I feel like it um, and I eat what I feel like. So normally that's a lot of sausage rolls and <laughs> cheese sandwiches and like fatty mm. things. But in the heat, you do have to force yourself to eat. So I just have small mouthfuls, naked bars. I quite like them. Um, just really things that aren't too sweet. And then if I get really desperate and I'm needing it, packet of wine gums. That's it. I thought you were going to say a bottle of wine then. No, yeah, that would be good. Well, I do put electrolytes in though because I know I'm not going to be able to eat. And milkshakes when you're finished, recovery of gods. I've got a little stash of food back here, easy reach. And I thought, what do I fancy? Claire's mum's apple cake. It's moist. Yes. I do sometimes forget to eat though. But I, I will go for four hours and not eat anything and then get to the end and think, <gasps> starving! Yeah. I also sometimes have a halfway stop on a run. I'll have a coffee stop after like 10 miles and have a sit down. And I've sometimes eaten even a whole burger and chips and then done the second bit. <laughs> that sounds delicious. It is, and you just need it. Your body needs it. You just got to pile the calories in. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. See, I told you it'd been raining quite a lot. Yeah, oh my God, I mean, I, I know it's been raining quite a lot from all of the days I've been raining. Yay! I had it, I had it. Mm. Do you know what? I was great until about 12 miles and then I started thinking, I'm really tired now. I kind of wanted it to be over, but we're here. Happy days. Fantastic. And I just wondered, after the challenge, are you still going to run barefoot? What are your thoughts? I think no, because it's very hard. I definitely will stay in minimalist trainers because I love the feel of, and the freedom of my feet, but the difficulty of being barefoot over every surface is quite tricky. I think I'll be barefoot on grass, on beaches forever but not on everything. I'm gonna get my shoes back on, minimalist style. Okay, yeah. and so you're continuing the barefoot run till the 17th of November. Yes. Um, how can people find out and follow you and what are you doing at the end? Well, if you go to annamcnuff.com or you just Google Barefoot Britain, you can come and find me and I'm doing loads of running stages in London at the end as well. So I'm gonna be on running tracks all the way around London doing marathons and then the last stage is gonna be from Kingston upon Thames, whoop whoop, right to Wimbledon Common across Richmond Park. So I, I would love for people to come and join me and you'll meet my mum because she's gonna marshal. <laughs> Amazing, well, thank you so much for letting us run with you today Anna it's been an absolute pleasure oh it's been a pleasure having you honestly it's been amazing thank you it's been so fun so everybody go and support Anna she's doing an amazing amazing crazy thing thank you <laughs>